it's Beach Cam's Man, and in part two of our trip to Shane Murtars in Ireland, Fergal shows us our new footbridge. We also see the completed sections that make our shield wall. And we also talk to Gillian Murtar about their carbon footprint, education, and reducing loads on the road. But before we dive in, if you haven't watched part one, you can click the link in the description. And as always, to stay up to date with our latest videos, please click subscribe, tick the bell icon, give this video a share and click the like button. It really helps our channel and community grow. So this is your uh, footbridge? Lovely. This is going to connect the two lift shafts, the two lift shafts, yeah. So, like we mentioned, the, the third lift shaft that they're just stripping out then as a cantilever deck. And then where, where you can see the bridge deck sat on the trestles there, either side, that will basically sit on those two cantilever decks. Yeah. Um, the, the bolt clusters that you can see along the top, um, they're cast in by shares, and um, that's all stainless, and then a stainless steel hand railing gets bolted onto the top of that from Stoneman Engineering at a later date. Okay. We farmed this deck down in this table down here. So we had to, with the camber and the geometry of the unit, we had to uh, create a complete false soffit. Um, so when that was ready, the cage was delivered from the guys and say dropped in. Then we have the service ducts, as you can see here at the end. Okay, so there's five different service ducts. And on top, when we have a look in a minute, the, this unit is very heavy. So the designer needed us to uh, install some insulation to ensure that it was light enough for the guys to lift on site. We can have a look at that when we're up on top. Yeah. But it was a complex unit, as you can see, Neil, if you have a look around there, the geometry just changes in direction. So it's a sort of similar geometry underneath to, to, the, other to, to the other bridge, yeah. The bridge. Yeah. I mean, the link bridge we created was a bit more complex than what Shays had to do. That's why, that's why we did it on site. We just left Shays with the easy bit. The easy stuff, yeah. <laughs> So the bridge, the, the, the bridge deck itself is 70 ton, Virgil? Yeah. Um, the reason why we had to keep it to 70 ton is we can only fit a 650 ton crane in the station car park. So we've got to forward think basically how we're going to install this structure. Yeah. The biggest crane we can get in the car park is 650. We know the radius, the centre radius of what this span is. So basically we have to design everything when we're lifting this structure from the middle of the span, because right. that's the radius of what the, the crane will be sat at as, you, as you're carrying right. out the lift then. Yeah, yeah. So at, at that particular radius, a 650 ton crane can only lift 80 tons. Now we always like to keep it around about 85% yeah. of the capacity of the crane. We don't like to take it up to 100%, it's just a safety factor we always build into everything. So Fergal then had the challenge of keeping the weight of this deck down. Now okay. the only way you can keep the weight of the deck down is if you form voids in the concrete somewhere. Yeah. So as we go up onto the top of the deck in a minute, you'll be able to see that there's, there's been um, polystyrene installed just to keep the weight of that unit down, as okay. Fergal mentioned earlier. Yeah. The five ducts that uh, Fergal mentioned as well, there to carry the services between both lift towers. Right, so your, your telecoms, your m and &E, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So on, on, top of the, on top of the edge of this bridge then, there's, there's not going to be an open power pit like there is on the link bridge. No. Um, there's a solid stainless steel parapet with a 300 mil glazing panel on the top of it then. Um, and so it'll be about a 1.5 meter high from, from where you see where the bolts are over yeah. there then. So there's 272 of them bolts cast into that deck then. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> and Fergal's obviously got the, the challenging task of getting them all in the right position. So when, when, when Stoneman Engineering come on site to fit the, the balustrade, it fits, yeah. I'm turning off my phone. Yeah. Which, which obviously when you've got a sloping gradient into the middle, as you can see, yeah. as, as you look down here, it's quite a challenging task getting them all lined and levelled. We asked Gillian Murtar what happens to the trucks once they've offloaded the precast in Dawlish and what Shane Murtars are doing to help reduce their fleet on the road. It's important we look at how um, we actually deliver it to our clients. And that's a lot of working one on one with our clients in the fact of wow, how many units, how many loads, how can we maximise those loads. So 
making sure that we're bringing value to our client and um, we're returning with trailers that are not empty as such. So we will find multiple ways of actually collecting, decking, whatever it is um, to actually bring back. And we measure all those miles. Our fleet is, we constantly investing in some new fleet. You may have seen um, recently the picture of um, the beam buggy, as we call it, um, up in Dublin port and that's new. But like we've done even the calculations and that's the newer the truck, the less emissions, you know, and um, we have, and there's less use of diesel, less use of all of that space. So it's very important that we actually manage that uh, critically. Um, I'll give you an example, and I suppose I need to go to a secondary project in order to talk about that, but it was a BAM not all project as well with um, London City Airport, where we were doing all the decks and a lot of bespoke beam work, etc. But there was over uh, 5,000 articulated loads of concrete went into London for that. And in order, you know, to actually maximise between design, logistics and the operations team on site, we were able to reduce the number of loads into that site by over 550 because of the fact that we redesigned the actual trailer. So what about truck capabilities? What what sort of loads can you go up to really with with the well, trucks that are loads and lengths of beams really? Well we've we've had a hundred and forty ton units that go on a bogey up to a bridge up near Dublin there. So we can do almost any way to and I suppose that's that's another one of the challenge things that we challenging things that we've had to do for Dawlish as well, isn't it? We we've obviously had the logistical challenge of actually physically getting everything to site, haven't we? Yeah. So we, we have to think about the shape and the size of the unit, what we can lift it with. Like Fergal's done a lot of work with redesign and recurve units, so they actually fit under Colonnade Bridge. Um, and and that, was, that came through the design team from Shea's, where we shortened the Healy units to allow, and, uh, enable them to go onto our trailer and go underneath. Like, like we've mentioned all the way throughout the talk, bid progress tours that we've done, there's probably nearly uh, one and a half thousand units which have come from Shea Murtar o o o over the, the kind of three, four years that we've been using them. Yeah. Um, so they were involved in Marine Parade, the first phase of Coast Guard to Colonnade, and then the second phase of Coast Guard to Colonnade, and now the footbridge, which is the, the final thing really for us. And we're now. still talking, Neil, so we're doing something right. Yeah, you know? yeah absolutely. I, to be honest with you, I think I speak to Fergal more than anybody else Monday yeah. to Friday. <laughs> So basically we got this uh, polystyrene laser cut to the shape, the geometry required to fit in the cage with the cover. Uh, that was then locked in place with spacers and additional reinforcement and uh, the couplers there will facilitate you guys inside tying in reinforcement and stitching that back in to finish the deck. And, that, and then that takes us back up to... Back up to our weight, design weight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like we mentioned, on, on top of here you get the, um, the bolt clusters which are, are bolted on for the fencing. Um, there's a bit of flexibility in there, which you can see where you've got the, the holes and the voids formed around the, the uh, actual bolt, to, so you, we can move it around. I think the polystyrene that I'm stood in now is about a metre thick, roughly, is it? Something like that? Yeah, yeah. So there's a large chunk of weight lost by taking these two spaces out. So it was cut from a laser out from a one metre by 2.4 metre block. So they, they laser to the geometry they sent them. So and do, you, and the do, do you laser things on site or do you just No, I, I bought that externally. Yeah. Easier for us. And then I think in, in the fine when, when we finally lift this in, it's lifted with a lifting beam, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. We can't we can't actually lift this unit from with no, the chains we need, like we need that. To have a we, need, lift, we need to lift yeah. it vertical, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. because of this potential that the deck can kind of buckle in on itself, exactly. isn't it? So we lift we lift from the, the wire straps which you can see on either end, Neil. Um, the, the two down there and two down there, and then we have a big lifting beam which goes over the top. And then we have the chains coming down, which allows us to lift the unit vertical. With such huge operations happening at Shea Murtars, we asked Julian how this affected the local community. Part of the Shea Murtar story is our social value um, pillar. Um, it's really important and has been since we like we were established about how we fit into our community, how we give back to our community and how, you know, um, as a business that is going on into the future, 
what does what does the public say about us and I suppose there's lots of ways we do that but one of our um, the one way that we really like giving back is towards uh, education and education of even bringing people into the civil engineering side of things there's lots of different types of construction out there um like we when somebody says they're going in for a role in construction that could be anything from mechanical engineering to architecture to project management and i suppose i don't want from the research here at the moment, sometimes construction can be seen very much as boots on the ground, mud, dirty. And we've tried to change a lot of that um, and see it as now moving into a more modern um, field for lots of young people. So we open up our doors to sort of 15, 16 year olds, um, uh, which recently we did actually, we had two different schools in the last two weeks alone, um, where if you count them all, that's nearly 100 um, 16, 15, 16 year olds who've come in. They have met with uh, various members of staff in engineering, um, production management, HR, finance, and got to examine over they've been here for probably in around four hours um and they get to meet one-on-one -on -one, ask questions uh both kieran as managing director and myself as shared services director um would take so the, the either the start or the end um kieran would always be pushing forward for education and understanding and math the different stem projects yeah, for me, it's more, um, I would actually try and encourage females into the STEM, the STEM um, area. We've been highlighting your videos to the kids that, you know, to understand what happens on a site and what we do. These are, you know, it, you can't do that. This sort of thing gives all that information, you know. Yeah. So uh, I'd say much appreciated. So that, that opposite us there is the start of the shield wall. Um, so where we put the lift, uh, the lift tower in on the seaward side, there'll be a big shield wall which slopes right the way up to the top of the, the staircase, and that will protect the staircase in, in the event of a 1 in 100 year storm event. Um, so it, as you can see, it's quite a, quite a structure to be built. So you can see there that we want to cast in from the higher side of the mould. Yeah. It gives a better finish, and we want farm sides back and front. So we're casting through the side of the unit. Okay. So the right hand side, as you can see there, Neil, would, be, would have been where the, ca the concrete was cast through. Okay. So they basically cast them on, 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 on the, the side, side and then we turn them over here before right, we okay. send them out to the site. So there's uh, the cage for the next unit there beside the mole. Yeah. Okay. And if you go further down, there's uh, the mole for the next stairs. Ah, You'll okay. see what the, we have one stairs unit cast, it's outside in the storage, I'll show you. So if you can imagine, when, when they do cast that on the side like that then, you'll end up with three, you'll end up with the form faces on all of the sides which are visible. Yeah. And when, when you join two units together, that is where you'll have the, 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 the side which has been trowel finished, where you don't necessarily get as, as good a finish as what you would do off a, off a form surface. Yeah. So further down here, um, the secondary wall mould is at the end of the table. So that's one of the units finished there. Okay, so we've got two more secondary walls to make. They're actually the two units, either side of the lift shaft, the transition units, so they're challenging. We're moving on to them next week. And you cast them horizontally as well, yeah? Yeah, so yeah. again, you see the lifters down here, we're casting through the side of the mall again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So when they design the, the pre-cast, they design it to be lifted out of the mold from temporary lifters, which are cast on the side of the unit. Yeah. And then when we install it on site, we've got our install lifters, which are on top of the unit and on the heel of the unit and that allows us to position and line and, line and, line and level a unit next to another unit. So obviously Neil, this is the, the mould, so that gives the V-shaped finish, as you can see on the top of the unit there. Yeah. And there's a female joint cast into the bottom of the unit, which will then sit on top of the male of the one below. So that's it there. Yeah. There's a reinforcement. There's some steel to go into that, but.
So this is our stairs mole, Neil. So we cast all the units for the stairs upside down. Yeah. Okay. So the guys are just preparing the next what's, stairs. What's down. the reason for casting upside down? Better finish. Uh, we're giving you a textured finish on the on the steps. So the best way to achieve that is upside down. Plus, in this instance, the uh, stairs are closed in in the room below plant room, aren't they? Yeah. Gillian has already told us about how they like to help educate young adults in various roles of construction, but there's another facility that Shane Murtar provide for the local community, and that's golf. I can't speak for you, Jack, but I, I just don't like the game. And there's no, no I'm, point in saying it. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big avid golf myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> so they're mainly par three and par fours. It's nine holes. Um, and <laughs> it's ma mainly, um, like there's a dog leg, the, the ninth hole is all over water. I'm told it's tough enough, um, but that's stress for me. But I, while I say it's stress for me, we have an amount of people from the local community who come out and they would um, play nine holes here and go off. There's no charge. And when you've got people who are in sort of elderly, pensionable, um, or on the other end, kids who, you know, are starting out and, you know, maybe don't have those access to those facilities um, on a local level. It's it's a great uh, amenity to have. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And the community really welcome it and are engaged in this as well. So that's, that's good. Yeah. So you can see there's loads of operations going on everywhere. You've got the stairs, you've got L units, yeah, yeah. you've got the bridge being fabricated. Shield wall units, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the size and scale of the operation out here and, and what it's kind of took to keep up with us installing precast on site has been a tremendous effort from both Shays and Bam, really. Yeah. I mean, like it, it, a lot of people don't really see all the work that goes on in the background here, but Shays have probably had, I don't know, 70, 80 men working on this at the same time yeah. as we've had 70, 80 men working on site. And it's, it's, it's nice for, you, for us to be able to show you the, the sort of work that, that they, they um, do for us, really. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I, I discussed a bit of an install sequence with Fergal. Um, we go through what units we plan to install each weekend. We traditionally load out a couple of units in advance of what we're doing and, and bring a couple of additional units over just in case we're, we've, we're kind of speeding through on one, pos one possession and we've, we've got the time to install more units. Yeah. Um, so this weekend we're loading out 10 of the shield wall units, which is what you, we saw when we were back in the yard. Um, and then the following weekend we'll start the install of the shield wall. Um, and then after that there's a bit of a build sequence with how the lift towers interface with the shield wall and the cantilever and the deck etc. So there's, a, there's a, a certain way we go about the construction sequence and that's the way we bring the precast over to site then. If you can imagine what we've just seen stripped, it's the equivalent of the opposite take. So these are the guys now tying in the couplers for the cantilever for the second stage cast. Every white mark you see on the soffit down here is a coupler to tie back into the third stage cast, which is yours on site. God, there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So this is complicated, but we need to get this cast relatively quickly because the lads are going to be looking for a short. Um, so we need to get the shield wall plant, uh, the plant room walls built. The shield wall needs to be partially installed, and then this this cantilever deck, which you can see here, then sits on top of all of that. Then, yeah. and this this will be formed finished concrete. So you can see where the guys have started to thread the reinforcement on. Yeah. That'll all get slid down. You can see where they're starting to position the couplers above. Then, so each each of the couplers has a designed position so that it doesn't clash with protruding reinforcement sticking out of the other units. Yeah. So which is what, which is why they put all the white, white marks on the floor to make sure it's all in the correct position. Okay. We now head over to see Rob, the design manager for Shane Murtar, and he will talk us through some of the processes that they go through when working with the Dawlish Seawall project. get the drawings initially from yourselves we'd review them we'd look at all that and we'd start drafting our own model and we'd be looking for uh, I suppose uh, ways of improving or making the the precast more efficient like so in terms of section sizes or if, if there was anything we could do in terms of repetition or anything like that and then we go back to yourselves and advise uh, anything if there was any like efficiencies that could be 
like built could, into the design yeah, yeah exactly it could help you and could help us um and then we look for clashes as well in we while we do the model we're looking for clashes in the between the units and between the different units like and i suppose in the the station area there was probably there was a lot of interface between different precast elements. In yeah, that, especially like. with all the bars and the couplers that tie all the units together. And yeah, exactly. The clash detection between we those. were able to look at that the, the, in between the the footbridge and the the landings and the the, the cores themselves, like and everything. So, um, no, it was really beneficial to use the the three D modeling for that, like in this. Yeah, state. We, we've used that in quite a number of discussions where we've been going back and forth as a designer to change different elements of the precast, and obviously. The, the, the awkward thing is actually physically putting everything together on site and making sure nothing clashes yeah. together, such as landing the bridge deck on the cantilevers yeah. with, with all the protruding reinforcement from the lift shafts and the stairs, etc. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think, look, using this at, at, in the early stages, it, like really, it gave everyone an insight into where the where there was going to be clashes and where there was going to be challenges, even with, let's say, the the falls in the top of the, of the, the cladding of the lift shafts and then uh, even the interface between the, the canopies on the lift shafts and the stair core itself like and directly form line or finish and all that like so it was really beneficial for that like you know so. And Shays also do all their own lifting calculations internally as well so they look at how they're going to they pick up each of the items of precast so they don't they don't put stresses and in, into the different elements of the precast so for example the lifting uh, the bridge deck that we were talking about yesterday on site that requires a lifting beam, so when we're lifting it, we're lifting the, the bridge deck vertically rather than on an angle and, and putting um, unwanted forces into the, the, the deck itself. We really hope you've enjoyed this video. Now, please make sure you subscribe to our channel as we have some more exciting videos coming soon, including one from Stoneman Engineering Facilities based here in Devon. Thanks for watching.